Hey everybody, Mandis Buckle here with Maximum Muscle Report. We're at the 2017 Chicago Pro with my partner Brent Swanson and wow, what a weekend Brent. Over 215 IFBB pros flooded Chicago, every single division and every division was stacked. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it just goes to show it's midnight right now in the NPC show. It's midnight on sun, Sunday morning and NBC's still going. But you know what? It's been a long weekend, but bodybuilding is alive and well in Chicago. Um, just such a great turnout and a stacked IPB lineup. I mean, what's so cool about this show is that you had every class represented and you had a lot of top level competitors doing each of these divisions. And it's just been, if you missed out on this weekend being here, actually come to Max Muscle Report, check out the pictures, check out the play-by-play, -play, but you missed a doozy. I mean, it was an awesome weekend. And we're not saying that just to plug. Uh, there's very few shows where there is every division. This is one of the only shows you're going to see that. Let's, let's kick it off with Bikini. There was 28, 29 competitors. Um, usually every week you see a little bit of a different look. It looked like they, they went with a little bit of a softer, fuller look. Uh, this weekend, Jessica Renee came away with the win and stamped her card to the O. Yeah, I mean, it was very well deserved. I mean, when you're at this level of the IFBB, at this level of a show, all these girls look great. And, you know, the judges know the look that they're looking for, and they kind of set the precedence, and that's what the way that they are going to go today. Not saying that the other girls weren't standouts, but she just kind of, in my opinion, just kind of stood out from the rest, and she had great attitude, great stage presence, and I think that even kind of set her apart from the rest of the girls as well. I like how she presented herself. You know, we move on to figure. Figure was deep. You had a Kamala Rodriguez who was in the top six but didn't walk away with the win. It was Anita Herbert. Um, she has the size. She was conditioned. She was dry. She was tight. It was a close race between first and second until they turned to the back, and Anita was filthy from the back. Um, again, dry, hard, tight. Once they turned around, she was a clear-cut winner. Yeah, and I think the figure girls kind of have a hard uh, balance to play because they can't be too soft or they're going to be look like too much like a bikini girl. Well, then they can't be too hard because then it's women's physique. So they kind of have to ride that fine line. And I think that the conditioned look that she brought with her um, symmetry, you know, great taper, um, was just kind of the right look that figure needs to go. I like the look that they went for this weekend in that division. And, and, and she's a rookie. This is only her third show. Uh, she just turned pro last year at National, so she's going to be a force to be reckoned with for years to come. I think she's 28 years old. We move on to the women's physique division. 29? 29 girls? I, I real, I, I, yeah, 29 or 30, right around. 29 or 30. It was a deep lineup. Um, we maybe didn't see some of the quality all the way through 6 or 7, but what we did see is a champion come back to championship form in Autumn Swanson, and she won pretty convincingly. I mean, here I mean, I'm, I'm screwed if I do, screwed if I don't. I mean, like obviously I think that because I'm her husband, but I'm, I'm, I don't want to say I'm her worst critic because I don't get on her, but I'm very honest with her, and uh, I think the look that she brought this weekend was the best she's had in a good long time. And you know, our goal going into the Olympia from here is just crank it up a little 10%. I think she's going to make it pretty hard on a lot of these uh, top girls. And she'll, I hopefully she's going to move her way back into the, you know, the top, top echelon. I think 10%, a little bit more, I think she's right there. The symmetry is there, the structure is there. So we got 11 weeks to uh, turn it up 10 more percent, in my opinion. Women's bodybuilding. Women's bodybuilding was deep. It was deep. Um, the girl who came away with the win actually switched to women's physique for a little while, and this was her return. Shape was there, symmetry was there. When she turned around and hit the back double by and hit the back lat spread, that that that's what sealed the deal for her. Yeah, um, it was kind of close between uh, the other gal. Uh, mine's drawn a blank, it's late tonight. <laughs> um, in the front, they were kind of, yeah, you could kind of see maybe going back and forth. But when, then when they turned around from the back, that little waist and those lats, just <laughs> ridiculous. She was dirty from the back. That lat spread was nuts. That lat spread was one of the best lat spreads I've seen in a woman's bodybuilder in a long time. Same with the back double. And when they turn around to the back, I mean, shows her one from the back, and she demolished that show from the back. Absolutely. 
we move on to classic physique. Classic physique was deep. Um, you probably went about nine deep that anyone really could have been in the first call outs. I think Aaron Feudal, who was in the top five in New York, ended up seventh, and, and, and he could have easily been third or fourth. George, who was a, a, a pretty heavy favorite coming in, ended up placing second, and you had a rookie making yeah. his debut, Cleveland Thomas. Cleveland Thomas, walk away with the win. I think it was, it was really that he just had the most balance from head to toe, symmetry, conditioning, posing. Uh, George gave him every, every bit he could handle but he did come out on top. Yeah, here's my prediction for classic physique. You know, everybody kind of looks at last year's Olympian says, well, this guy, this guy, that guy. There are a lot of new faces in classic physique. And I tell you what, um, back, you know, years ago, um, I competed in a different federation than NPC, which I never should have, because NPC is the best. Uh, but so did Cleveland Thomas. And Cleveland's been around for a while. But 44 years old. Yeah, but he hasn't, you know what I mean? Like, nobody really knows about him because he hasn't really competed on the big stage. And, you know, through making that pro card and coming to the stage, even though this was his first uh, IPB pro show, like, he's no stranger to a big stage. And, I mean, I thought, I mean, one and two could have flipped a coin. But, I mean, to come and basically win your pro debut in a classic physique in a deep class like that, my prediction is for the Olympic coming forward, these guys better be training their balls off because there are some new up-and-comers who I think are going to make it really hard on last year's top five. And that's not to take anything away from them, but this Olympia Classic Physique is going to be dope. It's going to be out of this world. I, I think with the addition of this new, this new division, I think for the next four or five years, that's probably going to be one of the most competitive divisions there are because you've got guys who are moving down from bodybuilding. You've got some men's physique guys who are moving up, and you have some guys who were in maybe some other federations or had that classic look and were just never big enough to win as a bodybuilder, but do bring that classic physique, and now they're just adding a little bit more size, and it's really something to see. It's yeah. something to see. Um, we move on to the 212, and wow, that was a battle. That was a battle. Again, another stacked lineup. Um, I, I want to start out by, by saying uh, this is a real special weekend. Um, we had the retiring of, of a guy who's been in the sport for over 30 years. We got to see Tricky Jackson go out with a bang. He finished in the top six in the Open. Congratulations, Tricky. And he came back and did the Masters and won it. Uh, they had a pose off with him and Big Freddie Smalls. Oh, man, About awesome. 10 minutes, guys. Yeah. You've got to see the video. Yeah. They went back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, and it was entertaining. The crowd was going wild. But back to, back to the competition, the lineup was deep. You had Tank, who Charles Dixon, who probably looked the best he has in a long time, ended up third. Uh, he easily could have won. The judges didn't see it that way. You had the kid out of the U.K., tons of personality, very balanced, very round, very conditioned very energetic on stage and he just kept posing and posing and posing and he got harder and harder and harder and he outlasted everybody. Yeah, I agree. And then they made a announcement that this was the first time like the uh, top five were all from a different country. So the IFBB definitely rep was represented by not just the United States of America, by a lot of different countries out there, which was awesome. I thought he got harder and harder, you know. Somebody like Charles Dixon, he has a different look, you know what I mean? I mean, like, he is like, no, like, you know how you can compare one bodybuilder to the next? There's nobody who really looks like Charles Dixon, which I think is a cool thing because he's just, He's a freak, you know what I mean? In a good way. He, he, he's a freak. He's a bunch of muscles he can pack on. Yeah, you know what I mean? So I really think, depending on what show he goes to, what look they go for, I mean, if he he's consistent. He brings a consistent package every time he steps on stage. But I understand why they went um, with who they went with for in first place. Um, I will say, though, as a whole, of the 212 class, that, um, you know, the, the, the top guys were pretty good. But um, there were some, towards the bottom and you know even towards the middle I wish the guys would have came in a little bit more conditioned um, I, I I really wasn't impressed that much with the, with the conditioning other than the, you know the top few guys but that's no knock that's just me on, on what I saw you know being right behind the dead judges and usually the 212 is known for coming yeah. in pretty conditioned yeah. the open bodybuilders 22 22 guys six deep any of the six could have won uh, any variety of shows um, you ended up with the top four 
ended up being Kevin, uh, Lewis, uh, Michael Lockett, and who am I missing out of there? Oh my God! Who was the fourth one? It's been a long night. So we had Lockett one, and then we had um, Lewis second, and then we had Kevin Jordan third, and then we had uh, our boy Charles Griffin fourth. Charles Griffin fourth, and and. Uh, Grimes ended Grimes up fit in and, yeah. and his debut. So like I said, it went six deep. Um, top four really changed around because Kevin Jordan was in the middle to start. Um, and him and Lockett were battling. Kevin looked great. And he started to fade a yeah. little bit. Um, and Justin came on. And as they posed and as they posed, Justin came on. And Charles, Charles really started to fade. Kevin started to fade. And Justin really posed his way from fourth to second and he pushed Lockett. A lot of people thought he should have won the show. The judges saw it as Lockett. He really couldn't go wrong either or, but it, it was a hell of a battle. Yeah, I, I really liked it because, I mean, uh, the judges today really worked those bodybuilders. I mean, for minutes, I mean, it was just awesome to watch just because it wasn't just like, ah, oh, quarter turn, quarter turn, quarter turn, front double, back double, you know, go off. I mean, they worked him. And as a fan, you want to see the bodybuilders work. You want to see who's put in the extra time on the posing practice, who is in shape, who just doesn't look like they're in shape, but who's really in shape. And then on top of that, who wants it? Because when you get tired, you're, you're, you haven't drank anything, and you have cotton mouth and all that stuff, it really really boils down to who wants it and who has nailed their conditioning and who can outlast the other guy, you know, and uh, Lockett did, and I think um, really from the back, his hamstrings and glutes were just unreal, unreal. I thought a little bit um, earlier today, he had a little bit of water in his stomach. When he came back tonight, whatever he did, that was gone. He was just diced, so um, it was a well-deserved win. And Regan uh, had a great uh, pro debut, ended up fifth. You see the lines and the structure on that kid. Uh, wow. Crazy. When, when he continues to add size, he's going to be something to see. Yeah. Um, you've got Kevin and Regan going to Vancouver right. next week. That should be an interesting yeah. battle. And I think, too, um, they're going to be battling out next week. And it's just basically apples and oranges. And actually, who can take this conditioning and this look and improve on it? And then who's going to fade? Um, obviously, you know, Kevin has great structure. Kevin has more muscle than Regan. Regan just kind of has that old school flowy muscle. And when he hits that vacuum pose, and I mean, Regan, if you see Regan in street clothes next to some of these guys, he looks very, very small. You get him on stage with his lines and his muscle bellies and stuff, he looks three times as big. Um, I'm a fan of him both. You know, Kevin's a good friend of mine. You know, obviously, personally, I'm rooting for Kevin, but I like Regan too. He has a great, great look, and he's almost just kind of like a, a, a Charles Dixon in this class, is that not a lot of guys can have that look. He has awesome lines, up and step, awesome separation, just kind of that old school bodybuilding look that a lot of people are missing these days. Kevin tightens up his lower half, his, his, his quads, his hams, his glutes, which we had talked to him about earlier. I think he was just overtraining a little bit. He comes into Vancouver. Uh, he he beat he beat him here this weekend. Yeah, I, I don't think I don't think he'd be able to catch him yeah. next weekend. Yeah. But you never know what could happen with the travel and the flight and everything. Guys, again, it was a it was a great weekend. Tim Gardner always puts on an amazing show. Once again, record breaking numbers. The judging panel really had their hands full. They really worked these athletes to the bone. And just about every winner was very deservedly came out to where they needed to be. And uh, they're all headed to the O. Yeah. Any closing words? Um, just, yeah, Tim puts on an awesome show, and as an athlete, you know, it's just really good to do shows where the athlete feels uh, treated like a rock star. And if you're if you're the highest of the high-level pro or if you're an NPC newbie, I mean, he treats everybody the same. Awesome, genuine guy and puts on awesome shows. And if you're out there looking for a great show to do, um, definitely find a Tim Gardner show, and uh, you'll be in luck. Vancouver's next week, and then Tampa, that's it. So if you didn't sign up for Vancouver, you've got Tampa, and we'll be there to cover it. Yeah. And that's the end. If you, you make it there, you're not going to the O this year. So we expect that Tampa is going to be even bigger than Chicago okay. this weekend. Okay. And when we talk about the men's physique class, it was, uh, it was a tough lineup. It wasn't real deep. Um, there was only about 14 guys, but it was high quality at the top. 
Um, you saw an ex-champion and a guy who's perennially in a top five at every show, the Arnold, the Olympia, the New York Pro, every show he does, Brandon Hendrickson. And he ended up second. Yeah. Um, you, you had another guy, uh, Kali, who had been knocking on a door but was had really could never crack the top five. He came in with a much bigger, fuller package. He was hard, and he ended up in a three-hole. He looked great, best he's ever looked. Right. But you had another rookie, pro debut, ended up walking away with the win. That was Sergi. He was hard and grainy, he really was. I thought Sergi um, definitely it was a well-deserved win. And you know, you know, you 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 coach the other two guys, you know. So I mean, they were right there. And you know, with men's physique and his competitors, you know, we're all gonna have off days. Um, right. Brandon had an off day. Let's just be honest. You know what I mean? It doesn't mean that he's not gonna come back and be better than ever. You know, I honestly think it's probably gonna light a fire in him. And this actually could work out good for him going into the Olympian and just being like, you know, now people who forgot who I am, I'm gonna you know bust even harder to bring an even better package to the Olympia. So like, as I was telling. Brandon earlier, you know, don't don't let this rock you too much. Let it just, just use that as more fuel to the fire and uh, gear up for the Olympia. Well, it's funny. We talk about somebody had an off day and they finished second. Not too bad for an off day. Oh, yeah, um, again, probably one of, if not the most consistent Agreed. athlete in the last three years. He's not placed out of the top five in any show. Oh, yeah. So um, we expect to see big things from him at the O. But uh, Sergi did get him, did get him tonight. He had his ticket, but again, it was his pro debut. Came all the way from Spain, so he had all his eggs in his basket and a well-deserved win. Um, top five was deep. Chase Savoy was a little bit off, but look out for him to be coming on strong soon. Once he really puts it together and figures it out, I wouldn't be surprised to see him cracking a top seven or eight at the Olympia. Right. What do you, what, in your opinion, um, what do you think that he's missing? He's just a little off. He's a little off. He's not, he's not hitting the mark because as far as shape, he's there with anybody. He's got that look. He's got the poise. He's got the posing. He's got the confidence. He just hasn't hit his mark yet. Um, and he keeps finding himself anywhere from four to six when he really should be battling for first or second at most shows. Once he puts it together, look out. Chase Savoy is somebody to be to, to be reckoned with. Right. No, I, I firmly agree. And like I said, it was a deep lineup. And we'll just see who comes at these next two shows before the Olympia. It could yeah. get pretty interesting. You've got the Linda Murray next week. You've got Baltimore the week after that. Then you've got Tampa. So the men's physique guys have a few more shows. Um, but it'll be interesting. Guys, until next time, Brent Swanson, Amanda Buckle, Maximum Muscle Report. We're out.